R. Kelly singing for a honey bed. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes, baby. Wow, style. I don't want to hurt nobody, but there is something that I must confess. Individuals who were once part of a tight-knit group with a certain individual now face a dilemma. Either collaborate with law enforcement or face the possibility of all the group's secrets being exposed to the media. This situation has led to everyone taking sides, and it appears that R. Kelly has made his decision as well. R. Kelly is spending more time in prison after being sentenced federally for child pornography and enticement of minors for sex. He got 20 years in prison today. He will serve all but one of those years simultaneously with a 30-year sentence for racketeering and sex trafficking. The judge ordered Kelly to serve one year in prison following the racketeering sentence, making him eligible for release at around the age of 80. Here's the situation. The notorious singer is currently incarcerated and is unlikely to be released for the next 20 years. His crimes encompass sex trafficking and racketeering, two offenses that Diddy has also faced accusations of. Of giving Robert Kelly donkey of the day, but this man constantly and consistently has proven that he deserves all the credit. Uh, Robert Kelly sat down for an interview with Gayle King. Leaving Neverland after show, Gail King with the Robert Kelly interview. In the case of R. Kelly, it's so much to unpack from what we've heard from the first part of this this interview thus far. But teen year old Aaliyah, God bless the dead. Robert continues to deny, deny, deny. Listen to what he told Gail King. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read I'm gonna tell and what you the women have said about you. I'm what the women something. have said about you. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. Lifetime. These girls were older. They were 20 years ago. Why now? Why would they come out now? Because I think that women have been traumatized and now feel comfortable in speaking out now. And they now believe that they will be believed. I love women. I love all women. I love everybody. These stories on Lifetime. They're very bold. This leads people to speculate. Could the two of them have been collaborating? Man, look. <laughs> I used to, let me tell you, sir, I don't mean to cut you. This is funny. I used to, I used to, you know, we used to be on the road. You know, you'd be like, yo, let me go with my puff room, see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in. You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. You, you ever close your eyes, you be like, I guess you're not presentable. And then walk away, because see, what happens is, if they be like, come on in, and then you come on in, they be like, this man just came into my room. I'm sitting there butt-ass naked. I told him to come on in, and he came on in. You be like, so what's going on for the day? Acting like you don't notice he there naked. You be like, bro, put some clothes on. What are you doing? Walk I don't want to see you naked. Grown man stuff. Yo, that's kind of disrespectful. So when you get, that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Yo, call call the artist up here to the room, tell him I'm going to have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. Butt ass naked. You be like, how the hell am I supposed to have a meeting with a nigga butt naked in the tub? Nah, man, I come back, man. It's actually much more probable than you might imagine. According to former acquaintances, Diddy has always operated in this manner, and it's never been a hidden fact. Perhaps his fans were taken by surprise, but those within the industry were certainly aware of it. Bad Boy Entertainment. I named it a bad boy. Because I wanted to go against the grain. Anytime you go against the grain, they consider you like kind of bad. Nothing negative, nothing like hardcore. Just, I didn't want to be regular. I didn't want to just make records. I didn't want to just make money. I wanted to make history. And that, that's all it's ever been about for me, making history. And making music that's timeless. I mean, it's music that's going to be around when I'm not here, when my kids ain't here. Music that, that, that is that good. And having artists and videos and things that, you know, really affect way of life in a positive way affects style fashion music um. diddy's 
involvement in criminal activities traces back to the early 90s when he was establishing himself as a bad boy. In fact, one of the purported victims asserts that she was assaulted by Diddy in 1991. That's a, that's a. So if we think about the possibility of a sex trafficking investigation, sex trafficking related charges, if we go to December 2023, uh, there was a woman who accused Combs and former Bad Boy Entertainment President Harvey Pierre uh, and another person of sex trafficking and gang raping her when she was 17 years old. Um, there was a Jane Doe who says that she was flown from Michigan to New York City, supplied with drugs and alcohol, and then assaulted by all three men at Combs' recording studios. Now, Combs, by the way, has always denied the allegations. And in fact, in response to one lawsuit, uh, had posted, I believe it was on Instagram, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I've sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation. And my legacy, sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear, I did not do, and he goes on to say, did not do this now. Oh, and just so you know, that same victim is alleging that Diddy and his associate, the former CEO of Bad Boy, Harvey Pierre, flew her out to spend time with them. Allegedly, they then provided the underage girl with drugs and alcohol before sexually assaulting her. Yeah, what you know? <laughs> like I said before, man, I was getting calls from females that stated that they had situations uh, that were, I'm trying to put it in a, in, in a way, they, they, there were situations that if law enforcement individuals heard it, uh, they had uh, Puff had broke the law with them. So he had committed a crime. And in doing so, if those are the females who went and found the lawyers to take their case, he's going to be facing criminal charges because the act in which they explained to me were criminal acts. The drugging, the uh, uh, the touching, the rape, the raping, all that. So now, I'm not going to mention the lady's name or put them out there because they are prominent people in the community now. But they had those type of experiences that... It's striking how the actions of the individual in question bear a resemblance to those of R. Kelly, who was exposed for similar behavior. Both of them seem to exploit their fame, wealth, and influence to manipulate young people. I thought that was going to be my last question, but you did bring up R. Kelly, and I got to ask this. Precedence does matter. And when we see, even though that was a different situation, different case, when we see what ultimately happened with him, he's going to be serving about 30 years in jail. He's, he's in the midst of serving about 30 years in jail. How much, if at all, does that play a role in the likelihood of a mountain of, uh, of legal matters just coming down on him like a tsunami in light of what happened with R. Kelly? It plays a big role, I think, in terms of how people are responding, those billionaires, those buddies of his that used to party with him. I think folks are making sure they keep their distance because of what did happen with R. Kelly. Folks used to come to the defense, or a lot of people came to the defense of R. Kelly, mm. uh, and only to find themselves on the wrong side of that story, the wrong side of history. See, we've had this evolution in this country around sexual assault. 15 years ago, if, you know, representing women, and I've represented a lot of women in sexual harassment, sexual assault claims, the women were shamed, uh, they were often humiliated, they would often lose their jobs, their reputation, their positions, and the man was always believed. Now, not always, but more often than okay. not, the man would be, uh, you know, the, the somehow come out the hero. Mm. And Me Too, we've had a whole paradigm shift. I mean, it's a shift in the way these cases are treated, mm -hmm. the way women are treated, and no longer is it the case that powerful men are given the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we are now willing and ready to hold them accountable. What specifically shifted the paradigm? Is there anything, any incident that stands out in your mind that changed the course of 
history to the standpoint that we will the you know what we're living in right now where things have changed so drastically and favorably i might add because this needed to happen oh the pendulum needed to swing right it was it was uh it was horrible absolutely positively horrible uh what would happen to women i, I think social media had a lot to do with it women being willing to come forward and tell their story you know there's something uh, powerful and there's strength in numbers so you get one woman telling her story you know it's easy to dismiss one person you get a multiple number of people you can even dismiss them but look at bill cosby a case like that there were tens of dozens of women that came forward and had a story uh, about Bill Cosby drugging them, sexually assaulting them. It's hard to dismiss that many people. That's kind of what's happening now to P. Diddy. Uh, Cassie Ventura's uh, lawsuit, we thought that was it. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, it just opened the floodgates it for It did, others. because she, saw, she filed the lawsuit. The next day it was settled, settled. but it didn't stop other no. allegations from coming down the pipe within a matter of days. And people get emboldened. Now, some people say, and one of uh, Sean's lawyers is a good friend of mine, uh, you know, some folks say it just creates a money grab. Folks who are out there just trying to grab money and, you know, uh, take advantage of this opportunity. I don't discount that. There are false allegations that are made, no doubt about it, but overwhelmingly, women who come forward and make these kinds of allegations, they know what they're going to face. They know the challenges going against someone as powerful as P. Diddy or you know, Jeffrey Epstein. So this is no cakewalk. This is not easy. This is not for the faint of heart. So if you are courageous enough to tell this story, my belief is you're probably telling the truth.